Please stand as you're able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. From us, form us for life that is faithful and steadfast, and teach us to trust like a child that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Brother. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated for the word of scripture. A reading from Genesis. The Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper for a partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was his name. 
The man gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh, and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. And the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. Hear what the Lord is saying to God's people. Today we will read Psalm 8, and we will read it in unison. Our Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, horses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Some Pharisees came, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Amen. And again. I think I should have taken this Sunday off as opposed to last Sunday. I just get driven nuts by this text, and here's the reason why. And it's exactly Jesus' point. People get very caught up in the lit litigiousness of marriage, and that, in fact, is used by Jesus as an image of the relationship of God's divine love with our uh, divine presence, with our human presence. And when you get to that kind of dry bones argument, you've lost the life in things. So I'm really not talking about divorce. I'm talking about how we communicate this radical love of God that Jesus brings to us and offers us and that the disciples rejoice in after the resurrection when Jesus shows up and says to them, it's me, put your hand, finger in my hand and in my side. And the community goes on to rejoice in that and great numbers come to understand. 5,000 are converted in one day. And what are they converted to? What do they come to? They come to the understanding that the love of God will pierce even the veil of death and hold us close so that whatever happens in our course of life does not overtake us, does not destroy us, but rather we have a constant partner who rejoices in us, who looks forward to our morning and looks forward to our evening. Mornings we get up, this is the old agricultural cycle built into the gospel, Morning, you get up to a beautiful sun going into work, to the work of the day to take care of the vineyard. Evening, you go down to bed with gratitude in thanksgiving for all that you have. As I listened to the presiding bishop's uh, sermon, to the House of Bishops, what's be calling the narthex moment, I realized, and I wrote him back, I said, I think you've got that. It's what's going on. It's how do we keep telling the story of the love of God that comes through the witness of the biblical text, but through our celebration here today and into our neighborhood. Because 
uh, as I was reminded by a friend during our Commission on Ministry meeting yesterday, you know, it's the service doesn't end here. The service begins when we go out. And casting that good name of God through the actions and words we do. So the narthex moment for us, I think, is how do we keep telling that story that got the disciples up, that got Peter to the golden gate and said to the fellow, silver or gold I do not have. What I have is in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. And he got up and walked. He didn't only walk, he went, they said, he went leaping into the temple. When's the last time you leapt as you came into the doors here? Not kidding. <laughs> and I think that's the why moment for us. That's the narthex moment. How are we going to leap with joy in the word that we claim guides us and feeds us? I think the invitation of the narthex moment is we have another chance to think about how to be church. We struggled through COVID. COVID isn't over, but we've learned a few things. We can gather, we distance, we mask, many are vaccinated. Okay, we've done that stuff. How are we going to, what did we learn in this desert time? How have we learned what is the core of our faith? And in the narthex moment, as it's described, you come into the come into the place of God here. Um, not that God dwells only here, but this the choosing to come in is to come in to walk with God and with God to be in God's love. If you choose not to come in but to go out, you go out into empire, into trusting in ourselves, into hoarding up what we think we need to survive, into everything that sort of tears human community apart. The step into faith is to embrace the diversity with love and to discover the richness that each of us brings as we come to know one another. And, we share, and then we go out to share that realization. I'm wondering if we don't really have to rethink how we do the work in here. What might this look like? And so as an example of what might our liturgy really look like in this narthex moment, because the liturgy is, as one of my scholars said to me, this is our rain dance. This is how we tell the story. The liturgy is a whole lifetime of formation from the beginning, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, till the last, amen, alleluia, alleluia. Let me just give you a little example because this goes along with the leaping. If you crack open your bulletin to page 9, this is the center moment. If this was a theatrical production, this is, this is the midpoint of Act 2. This is where the whole revelation of our faith gets put before us. It's the Eucharistic prayer that sums up Jesus' sacrificial giving of himself, but out of love, and in fact shows us how to continue to do that, to replicate it, to relive it in our hearts, in our lives. But the little dialogue at the beginning, and I'll only pull that apart, because I think in many ways we get there and we kind of do it rote. So let's just go through it, and then I'm going to walk us through it again. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. So at this point, we've heard the scriptures. You've been illuminated by stunning preaching. Thank you. <laughs> and we've laid before ourselves, the statement of the creed, what we really claim as the core of the faith and what, we, what sustains us, how God is in relationship with us. We'll deal with the creed another time. And then we lay the prayers before God. These are the needs we have. At this moment then, having done all that reflecting, this little dialogue says, God's right here. Do you know it? Are you feeling it? This is a moment to leap. And the answer is, and also with you, the mutual recognition that we are doing something here that recognizes 
that dynamic power of God to save. Now, the next line is, it's real simple, and you're taught at school, you know, you should raise your arms when you're celebrating. Lift up your hearts. What that really says is, if you ain't with it, there's the door. Don't stay here if you're not ready to live into what we're about to proclaim. Because that falls back on you as a judgment in the early church. Receiving communion, not ready for it, or not atoning for your sin would leave you in judgment uh, with Christ's judgment against you. We don't teach it that way now. But it's still the invitation that's going on there. Lift up your hearts. Put your whole self in this. And of course the answer is, by godly yes, I'm ready. It's like, um, let's see, Wisconsin lost this weekend. Did Iowa win this weekend? I mean, it's when that winning touchdown happens, right? Woo! Let us make thanks to the Lord our God. Very simple phrase, but it says, I believe what we've been talking about is true. Through the scriptures, through the creed, through the power of God to hear our prayers and to be with us. And now, in this moment, the Spirit will make us one body. One body in spirit and in love. And the answer is, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. I will. I'm here to do this work, to join in this body, and I will take it with me out the door. That's only six little sentences. There's that much baked into it, over history and time, over theology, and over uh, public witness. Can you imagine what it would be like if we unpack the whole thing? So, if we've got that much good news to share, we're in the narthex moment. We, I invite us not to get caught up in the litigious behavior of the ones who ask Jesus, can you divorce? But listen to Jesus' answer, let us be like children with the exciting news of God's love that knits us together as a people and promises us that whatever happens, it will not overcome us. And let us go out the door, proclaim it, and then maybe in the narthex moment, we in a collective reflection might think how we celebrate here with each other so that somebody might come leaping through the door or leaping on the way out the door. I'll pay attention, I got a bum left knee right now, but I'll try because I think we're worth it and I think we've got the capacity to deliver a message of hope in this challenging era, but real hope. Amen.
now either standing or sitting, let's recite our Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Father, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. We believe in the Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of all people, you show us the way to take up willingly and openly your reign among us so that we may be so welcoming to all you place on our planet. We praise your name. For the earth in its beauty, we praise your name. For the wisdom and commitment of leaders, we praise your name. For those with birthdays, Larry's, Jack's, Parker, Steve, Sharon, Quentin, Philip, Herm, Maria, and Grace. We praise your name. For those with wedding anniversaries, Bruce and Jen and Matt, we praise your name. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You are the source of solace in every need. We lift before you Maureen, Robin, Cass, Joanne, Lucy, Mary, Rich, Kevin, Carolyn, Peter, Crystal, Sean, Rick, Joanne, Sally, Marion, David, Carol, Corin. Ryan, Judy, Bob, Beckett, Lars Jr., Gary, Janet, Nancy, Susan, Cloyd, Haley, Linda, Joe, Patty, Mark, Mary, Fritz, Jim, Jan, John, Daryl, Doug, Diane, Ann, Susie, Chris, and Michelle, and for all those in continuing care. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and those who mourn, hear our prayer. Give your grace to all we name before you. Lord, hear our prayer.
few announcements for today. Chili supper is at the same time now? No. They had decided that the chili supper was too complicated oh. given Got it. Uh, COVID. COVID and mm -hmm. other factors. So we're, they will have a, a table for some information. Also, our Boy Scout group will be there selling popcorn, if not doing a demonstration. Cool. Thank you. So some things are here and open, and some things are we're still kind of, we'll get there. It's the story of life. Um, we had an extended meeting of the Commission on Ministry yesterday, transitioning, or, um, well, our bishop-elect, Betsy Monat, that was sort of the fly on the wall, as she said, just seeing where we're at and how we're working. And um, that's one of those experiences we're having where she's dipping in uh, to be with us. I invite you to hold her and her family in prayers. Her husband um, had sudden, I don't think it was an emergency, but a detached retina. And uh, so he uh, took that, they had that surgery, not today, Sunday, since the surgery Friday and an appointment yesterday. So I just invite you to lift up the Monat family. Uh, they have enough to do in a transition to here, but for their health and wellness. Um, trunk or treat? Oh, this afternoon, I mean this morning at 11.30, uh, uh, um, Amelia Sauter will be here, uh, as I put out in the email, uh, and it will begin in the courtyard. She, I brought her because as we head towards the 24th and do a uh, creation care, a rogation day celebration here, uh, she teaches uh, nature and forestry therapy, which is a spirituality practice that I think helps us connect to our environment. I think so often we just sail by trees, flowers, you know, raccoons, whatever you have. And it's sort of just there. And so she's inviting us to be intentional in, in recognizing the planet we live in. And so I invited her to join us this afternoon or this late morning. So if you're able, at 11.30, we'll have about a one-hour program uh, with three sections in that, and we'll gather in, in the courtyard. Let us ascribe to the Lord the honor to God's name, bring offerings, and come into God's court.
All right, here we go. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Rightly we give you thanks and praise, gracious God, for whom and through whom all things exist, because you made us little lower than the angels and crowned us with glory and honor. Long ago you spoke to us through the prophets, but now you have revealed yourself through your Son, heir of all things, reflection of your glory, and imprint of your very being. Through him you sustain all creation by your powerful word. In him you made purification of sin. As your servant, he tasted death for everyone. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels and the whole host of heaven singing your eternal song. Holy, whoops, we have music today. Merciful God, you sent your Son as the pioneer of our salvation. Though we do not yet see everything according to his will, we do see Jesus crowned with honor because of his suffering and death. Through this holy meal in your company, show us Jesus today. In the midst of this congregation, raise up your spirit of love and joy and peace. Send the same spirit in this, on this bread and this wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks, gave it to the disciples and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Transforming God, visit all today who dwell on, on the throes of suffering, sorrow, pain, and distress. Give them courage to withstand and patience to persist. Take away all the world prevent your children from coming to you, and give your church grace to receive your kingdom as a little child receives it. Receive, your, oh, receive into your arms of mercy any who have been dismissed or excluded or treated as objects of shame. Melt all hardness of heart into the wonder of a people united in your in, inseparable love until heaven and earth are joined in the banquet of your glory, ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in his heart by faith with thanksgiving. <clears throat> Let us bow our heads and pray God's blessing. In the midst of us, the spirit dances and rejoices that we have gathered. She fills us with hope and love and sends us to the world to dance that message for others to see, like a bee in a hive announcing the supply of nectar. Go forth with hope and joy and life and let this meal sustain you and may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and forever. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. I do want to announce, uh, I'm sorry I forgot it, that Shiny Matthew Cuddy begins Sunday school for our 5 to 12 year olds today in the nursery. So spread the word. The body of Christ. the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Mm -hmm. 